warning, if you watch this video, you will definitely be buying an FJ Cruiser. Hey there everyone, welcome to FJX 2000 Productions and another episode of Let's FJ. My name is Hayden, and in today's video, we will be diving into everything, and I mean everything, that makes the FJ so great. I'm going to cover a whole slew of reasons why people love their FJ so much and why they're in such high demand right now. If you are here doing research to see if the FJ Cruiser is right for you, you've come to the right place. And I hope current FJ owners can watch and enjoy as well. Let me know what your favorite things about the FJ are, especially if I forgot to list them in this video. You could also send this video to anyone who needs convincing to buy an FJ Cruiser. So be sure to share it with your friends if you know they're in the market and thinking about getting one. But as always, like the video if you enjoy it, subscribe to join the FJX2000 community, and be in the loop when new FJ videos are released. And now, let's begin. As we get started with this list, I will just preface that the FJ Cruiser isn't the perfect vehicle for everyone, and in a future video I plan on covering all the reasons why the FJ may not be the best vehicle for you, or all the warnings about FJ Cruisers you should know about before purchasing. So essentially this video will be about all the pros, and that video will be about all the cons. But rest assured, there are a whole lot more pros than cons. Starting with the exterior, just look at it. The Toyota FJ Cruiser is one of the most unique vehicles ever produced, and it is really just amazing that we got it at all. The FJ Cruiser managed to defy all odds and reached production after only three years from the time of its first concept appearance to when it rolled onto dealership floors. That would be like Tesla's Cybertruck being released right now since it debuted back in 2019, but even that still hasn't made it to production. The FJ captured the hearts and interest of the world with its distinctive retro styling and obvious off-road focus that paid perfect homage to the legendary classic, the FJ40 Land Cruiser, a vehicle known for its durability, dependability, and off-road prowess. So in an age where all cars had become somewhat similar and bland, the FJ Cruiser stood in stark contrast to almost any other vehicle on the commercial market. Everyone had to have one, and that still holds true today. Though the FJ was discontinued in the US market in 2014, it has still been produced for other markets worldwide, and very little has changed from 2007 to now. The FJ Cruiser has a seemingly timeless design, and many even mistake my own FJ for being much newer than it actually is. They almost don't believe me when I tell them it's a 2008, a 14-year-old SUV. But one of the most eye-catching things is the color options to choose from. Voodoo Blue, Sun Fusion, Army Green, Radiant Red, all such great colors. And the iconic white roof even helps keep the FJs cooler during the summertime when the sun is beating down. I love how the FJ's grille has the Toyota logo spelled out across it, yet another callback to the Land Cruisers which sported a similar logo versus most other Toyotas that simply have the round Toyota logo. And the FJ's OEM roof rack is another great looking accessory that can be useful too for mounting accessories like lights, recovery equipment, or even transporting kayaks. One of the most unique things about the FJ that people love are the three front windshield wipers added out of necessity since the windshield is short and wide, which gives the driver a neat panoramic view of their surroundings. One of the things that surprises a lot of people is the FJ's unique suicide doors, as many people simply look at the FJ and assume it's only a two-door vehicle. Upon discovering the suicide doors, people usually get excited and find getting into the rear seats much more fun and easier than they previously thought. Overall, from the exterior, the FJ is a hard vehicle to miss, making it easy to spot in parking lots and easily noticeable from a distance when driving down the road with its distinctive headlights and white roof. And of course, we can't forget the mirror lights. How many other cars do you know that have actual lights in their mirrors that aren't just amber marker lights or turn signals? Probably not many. Though they aren't terribly bright, they also make the FJ, even at nighttime, that much more recognizable. The FJ is also great due to all the factory accessories one can add if they want to keep their FJ stock but like to equip OEM add-ons. You have the OEM rock rails, roof rack, brush guard, driving lights, air dam with roof lights, TRD wheels, and black trim from the Trail Team's special editions that can all enhance the general appearance of the vehicle. 
Speaking of special editions, almost every year the FJ was built, Toyota produced a limited number of special edition models, which I have a whole video on if you want to learn more. But these special editions came in unique color schemes with color matching roofs and other accessories, making them especially rare and coveted as collectible models, and even giving them a slight edge performance-wise when compared to stock FJ cruisers when it comes to off-road abilities. Moving on to the interior, the FJ just gets that much better, as the cabin feels large and spacious for the driver and front passenger, due to the large amount of headroom, making it accommodating to tall folks who have trouble fitting in other cars. And the windshield is placed so far forward that it allows for a flat dashboard that can be used to set things down easily and even be worked from if need be. The FJ will feel like you just hopped into the cockpit of a tank or space shuttle, so not only will you look cool, you will feel cool. People absolutely love the interior accessories, like the triple gauge dash cluster that includes a compass, thermometer, and inclinometer, truly making you feel like this vehicle is designed and ready for any adventures that lie ahead. But the dashboard also has one more trick up its sleeve, a second glove compartment, perfect for holding smaller items and making accessing them so much easier than traditional passenger side glove compartments. The FJ also has a host of various buttons and switches that I discuss in one of my other videos, but often many of these are still left blank, giving the owner the freedom to add a multitude of accessories, from USB chargers to light switches or even ejector seats. Nothing will make your FJ feel like it's truly one of a kind than when you begin adding custom modifications and making improvements. The FJ has a decent amount of cargo space in the rear and can open up even further when the rear seats are folded down or even removed completely, making for a perfect platform for overlanding gear and accessories, especially with popular mods like sleeping decks or rear cargo drawers and fridges. The FJ's shifter knob is also legendary, with many mistaking the shifter knob for a lightsaber handle, especially in the case of my 2008 trail teams that came with the silver aluminum knob of destiny. And we cannot forget the cool secondary sun visors added in 2008 that help with blocking the sun since the front visor just isn't long enough to cut it. And the interior of the FJ is notable for being all plastic, making cleaning a breeze. The FJ could also come with either rubber or carpet floor mats, giving you the choice of just how weatherproof you want your interior to be. But either way, with water-resistant fabric upholstery, the FJ could almost be considered waterproof. Do keep in mind though, while some claim the FJ can be washed out with a hose, this is probably not the best idea as there are still places water can get that could harm electronics or get into the padding under the floor and cause molding to occur in extreme scenarios. Now let's talk about the FJ's performance. The FJ Cruiser was equipped with a 4 liter V6 for all model years, but the engine changed between 2009 and 2010. The earlier models put out 239 horsepower and 278 foot-pounds of torque, while the later models bumped up the horsepower to 260 but slightly lost some torque, only managing 271 foot-pounds. So not a huge difference, but it is neat that buyers can choose between the two as there are some differences when it comes to maintenance or modifications that make certain model years easier to work on than others. And speaking of options, one of the best choices for the FJ in some people's opinion are the transmissions, with Toyota offering 5-speed automatic and 6-speed manual transmission options. Many people rave about how fun the 6-speed is to drive, and how its superior gear ratio makes upgrading to aftermarket tire sizes better, or how it makes low-range off-roading easier. But for people who want more simplicity and peace of mind, the reliable automatic transmission is an excellent choice and makes tackling challenging obstacles a breeze. Regardless of which engine or transmission you have, the FJ always has enough power to get the job done. With Toyota's dependability, many owners drive their FJs into the 300,000 mile range and beyond with no issues to speak of. And with the FJ's drivetrain being shared between so many other Toyota SUVs, parts are easy to come by, making taking care of this discontinued vehicle no sweat. These things will run forever if you take care of them, and that's why people aren't letting theirs go. The FJ can also tow 4,700 to 5,000 pounds, which is usually plenty for most people's needs, and makes hauling your campers or toys to the mountains that much easier. 
When it comes to safety, the FJ wipes the competition away with ratings that surpass similar vehicles in its same class. And there are plenty of stories from FJ owners who get caught in terrible accidents yet survive due to the robustness of their FJ. So overall, the quality of the FJ Cruiser's build is evident by their dependability, longevity, and ability to take whatever is thrown at it and eat it for breakfast. That brings us to the topic of the FJ Cruiser's status as an off-roading icon. As mentioned earlier, this vehicle takes its off-roading roots straight from the Land Cruiser FJ40 of yesteryear. And while some contest that the FJ isn't a true Land Cruiser successor, take a look at this. Here you have the FJ40, here is the FJ Cruiser, and here is the modern Land Cruiser. Now you tell me which one looks like it should hold the title of favorite grandchild by the 40 series Land Cruiser. The FJ Cruiser could come with part-time four-wheel drive if you had the automatic transmission, or full-time four-wheel drive if you had a manual transmission, meaning you are ready to tackle whatever elements are thrown your way at a moment's notice. Plus, shifting the actual shift knob versus turning a little dial on the dashboard is so much more satisfying when it comes to going into four-wheel drive. Many find that the FJ is an essential asset to them when it comes to winter travel or dealing with harsh weather making it the perfect bug out vehicle if need be. And for those who find themselves on the trails, the additional off-road aids like the rear differential locker and active traction control, or ATRAC, make getting stuck a thing of the past. This vehicle is ready to be your weekend warrior, your overlanding base camp, or whatever you need it to be, since it will take you anywhere and everywhere. And for those lucky enough to have an automatic 2013 or newer, you may have the option of Toyota's Crawl Control, where the FJ practically drives itself off-road. All you have to do is steer it in the right direction, and it can do the rest. I've even seen Crawl Control get folks dug out of deep sand. Talk about a lifesaver! This vehicle was designed for the great outdoors, and hopefully that is something you get to use your FJ4 on a frequent basis. But if four-wheel drive just isn't your thing, and you live somewhere where it doesn't really matter to you, guess what? Toyota made a two-wheel drive version of the FJ just for you. And it could still come with a rear locker if you're lucky, so you're still not left in trouble even in the worst case scenarios. Thanks Toyota for over-engineering this thing in all the ways that matter most. I do appreciate how the FJ does have modern technology and safety systems that are essential such as VSC, ABS, and of course all the off-road traction aids for low gear off-roading, but they also managed to keep the FJ incredibly simple, which is a huge bonus, as many of today's vehicles are so over the top with electronic systems and features that it almost becomes a burden to modify or work on them. Just look at the FJ's simple interior. Huge chunky buttons make this thing operable even if you're wearing work gloves, and it just gives the coolest utility look to everything. The fact that it's pretty much a big toy keeps it fun to drive and easy to modify. I mean, just look at the subwoofer some models could come with, so you can bump your favorite tunes and vibrate those rearview mirrors to your heart's content. The FJ could also come with a 400 watt outlet plug, and back in my high school days, I played Call of Duty out of the back of my FJ using it. It was legendary, but nowadays it comes in handy all the time for when I need to charge items on the go when they don't have a cigarette lighter outlet plug. Wrapping up my thoughts, the FJ is not only an amazing vehicle, but it has a great community behind it as well. You can find tons of other owners who love their FJ Cruisers and are willing to share advice and tips for modifications or maintenance on the FJ Cruiser forums, various Facebook groups, and other communities online. And getting one is also a bit like an investment if you can find a good deal on one with low miles. Over the past couple years, FJ resale values have skyrocketed as they continue to appreciate beyond everyone's expectations. Even my used FJ is probably worth the same now as it was seven years ago with half the miles. One museum quality 2014 Trail Team's Ultimate Edition FJ Cruiser even sold on Bring a Trailer for an astonishing $103,000. Luckily, that is not the norm, and FJs can still be readily found for a decent price, but still impressive, right? So get out there, find yourself an FJ Cruiser, and buckle up for the adventures ahead. If this video has helped convince you to buy an FJ Cruiser, let me know. I sure hope it does. I've been lucky enough to meet various folks over the years who have said my videos are what inspired them to buy an FJ Cruiser in the first place, and I love hearing that. I just know I love my FJ, and hopefully you will too. 
Remember to share this with others if they're considering getting an FJ or need convincing to do so, and subscribe to be notified of future FJ videos coming out soon. Thank you for continuing to support my channel, and I appreciate your patience between uploads, as dental school has kept me pretty tied up for the time being. But hopefully, things are better going forward, and I can dedicate a little more time to making you all FJ Cruiser videos. Best of luck to you all, and until next time, take care.